the Unfriends and Kids podcast with Jack and Zoe. Um, I think tonight we're going to go straight into talking about all things dads. Dads, daddies, yes. puppy. Yes. Whatever tickles your fancy. Yes. So, do you, like, is this a kink that you engage in? So, I've done, like, the whole daddy kink before, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I am into, like, you know, older men, like, so dads. I am aware, yes. And they don't, you know, love being called daddy. Exactly. Oh, see, I've had an opposite, like, reaction. Like, my first time calling somebody daddy yeah. was someone who was a dad. It was very, like, and I remember, like, going into it, like, because he messaged me beforehand being like, so you call me daddy yeah. tonight? Because, like, I'd already been with him previously. And I was like, I don't know. Like, that, that's, like... <laughs> That's a bit dirty. Yeah. Like, I didn't know if I could commit to it. And I was like, I didn't know if in the moment I was going to be like, oh, daddy. <laughs> like, I didn't know if I'd be able to commit to it. Yeah. And then by the time we were actually in the moment, like, I was like, oh, like, that actually wasn't that bad. Yeah. And then, like, the next time I saw him, it was, like, fully, like, the daddy, baby, girl. And, like, yeah. they were, like, really into it. And I was like, if it was with anybody else, this would be sexy, but that man is just naughty. <laughs> So, I guess beyond that, I have then still engaged in, I guess, like, daddy fucking baby girl sort of shit. Yeah. But, like, I feel like it's very, depending on the person. Yeah. Like, you can't call anybody daddy. Like, if it's, like, a scrawny, like, little 18-year-old boy, and it's like, I would hurt you. Like, I'm not going to call you daddy. I, I could snap you in half. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, if I could beat you in a fight, I can't call you daddy. No. Like, there's limits. <laughs> no. But, like, what... Like, is there, like, any sort of appeal to it for you, or just... So, I like the kink mm-hmm. myself. Like, this is someone to make me sound like such a whore, but, like, <laughs> every person that I've slept with... Yeah. I've always, like, communicated with them beforehand and everything about, like, kinks and that, and the question I always ask is, like, hey, do you like to be called daddy? Yeah, but, like, when did you kind of engage into that? Because after your virginity story... Yeah. In the last episode, I don't think you're, you know, walking around at 14, meeting you at this guy's like, hey, like, I've never spoken to you before, <laughs> but daddy? No, so it was um, a one-night stand. So he was, like, a mate of mine. Mm-hmm. And then it turned into a one-night stand, and that night was when I got, like, tied up and everything for the first time. And I remember him saying in, like, previous conversations that he wanted me to call him daddy. Okay. So I was like, all right, like, I'll have a go at it. And I did it, and I will, like, I'll never forget (laughs) that night. I feel like it's just such, like, going into it, it plays on your mind. It's like, you know, because, like, you don't often call people dad who aren't your father. Yeah. So then to go in there and be like, daddy, and then make it sexual. But the first time, like, we've all fucked up and called, like, a teacher mum in school. But this is a complete different scenario. Yeah. Like, you're not calling your teacher mum in school because, like, you think her tits are great. Yeah. Like, whereas, you know, you're calling someone daddy and, like, they're pounding you. Like, and you're trying to make it sound sexual as hell. Yeah. Well. But then, like, you go home and you see your dad and you're like, oh, hey, hey. dad. <laughs> yeah, like, so hey, funny. daddy. Hey, dad. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just, like, I don't know. It's just very different. It definitely plays on your mind before. Yeah, and then I guess after that it just kind of comes. Yeah, you know, after the like first you could, time you just get used to it. Then like you slowly like get better with that the distinct difference between yeah. dad and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so you've also just mentioned that a lot of the men that you sleep with are older men. The past, I want to say like three years, mm-hmm. three four years, I. A lot. A a few. (laughs) A few. (laughs) But, you know, they're, like, not, you know, 50-year-olds that, like, my dad's, like, you know, would like me and be like, oh, he's a cool guy. They're, like... Right, so it's kind of, like, they're dads, but they're not, like... They're under 40. (laughs) Okay, good. Okay, I I actually appreciate that. So the oldest person you slept with has been under 40? Yeah, 38. 38. That's not too bad. 
I'm not here with my, my, little, my little grandpa as my little 60 year old. No, I'm just you 38. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day you'll get to my level, but until then, it's okay. And then, you know, top spawn a big spawn, <laughs> so it might not be too long. <laughs> you gotta get a bit of a bald spot on. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of them. Just how I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, like, so your taste in men is clearly, obviously, older than Yes. Men. Does that, is that reflected in, like, okay, if, uh, if I ask you what celebrities do you think are attractive, like, is that going to be, like, reflecting in, like, your dad sort of, like, what celebrities do you find attractive? Oh, like, Johnny Depp, so, again, like, the older the ones. The dads. Yeah, the dads. Yeah. <laughs> All right, like, so, Johnny Depp, do you, is it just him? Oh, at the moment it is. <laughs> Wow. So Johnny Depp's always been a favourite though. Like, <laughs> since when? Like, oh. how long is your life? Well, probably since I saw, like, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> right, so a very long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just one you never grew out of. Yeah, definitely. See, for me, I feel like my ability to sleep with older men and, like, the kind of daddy vibe is, like, my obsession for Adam Sandler. Yeah. Like... Oh, like, the things I would fucking do to that man. And it's, like, I very much see that reflected in, I guess, my choice of men. Yeah. Like, I, like the celebrities that I would do anything for in yeah. my choice of men. Yeah. They just all come together <laughs> as one. But it's, no, not really, because I've got, like, kind of two categories, where it's, yeah. like, I've got, like, one of these, I don't even feel like you know him, because it's just so sad. But, sorry, Adam Sandler... Kevin James, Adam Sandler's friend. That's not even the bad one yet. Oh. Scotty Cam. No, I you can't. Don't, no. You don't know who Scotty Cam is? I haven't even heard of that name before. Oh my goodness. He is, like, he's the host of, like, the block. He is, like, Australia's Steve Irwin, but make it construction. He's, like, in your mind, 10 ads, he's on Backyard Blitz. No. See, I don't really watch, like, TV. I'm more, like, Netflix. What? I'm just straight up Netflix. I don't watch TV. Wow. So he's basically, like, an older man. Like, he's, like, on, like, I don't know, he just matches Monopoly ads, but, like, that sort of vibe, like, an eat cafe. Yeah. Oh, he's, like, you would recognise him if you saw him. And it's, I have a very yeah. unhealthy, like, because, like, that man is so fucking sexy and he's down here, like, renovating walls. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fucking bad. But then my other, like, kind of category yeah. of, like, men is, like, Frenchie. Like, just, like, dirty Aussie, like, tradies with, like, fucking mullet mustaches. Yeah. But I feel like it's definitely, like, the mullets and the bogan-ness that yeah. brings it out. Because, like, he's not the best to look at, exactly. You can take that back. Either on air or after. That's fine. We can have our words. <laughs> I don't mind, but I don't know. But <laughs> I think it's just, like, that attitude and everything for him as well, mainly. Yeah, I definitely In think... my opinion, anyway. <laughs> I think it's more like a funny guy. Like, if I look at, you know, like, your Frenchies compared to Adam Sandler, like, it's all the comedic. Yeah. Sort of, like, people. But, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, God. I feel like I'm just throwing myself under a bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no coming back from being, like, Frenchie, Adam Sandler, Scotty Cam. Yeah. I hopefully somebody at home who is listening to this knows who fucking Scotty Cam is. <laughs> And I hope that someone leaves a review just roasting you for being so fucking un-Australian and not knowing who Scotty Cam is. Sorry. I'll look him up after this and I'll probably be like, oh yeah, no, yep, yeah, yeah, you fucking will. And we'll be having some words about that. <laughs> Actually, so speaking about having words, mm-hmm. I ended up messaging my ex. Okay, so you have answers on that one. I have answers on that one. So I messaged him and like sometime like early, early, early. Yeah, so this is following up from our last episode when Zoe said that she saw her ex's new partner on Tinder. Yes. And she doesn't know... I like, didn't know what was going on. We then. don't know if what that situation So was. I messaged him and I was like, hey, and he was like, well, like, hey, what's up? And I was like, this is a really random question, <laughs> but, like, are you and your girlfriend in an open relationship? And he was just straight up like, why? And I was like, okay, so I was like, I don't know why, but this randomly popped into my head last night. Yeah. I was like, but I remember, like, I was scrolling through Tinder, you know, however long ago it was. And I'm not going to say her name, but, like, she popped up. 
Yeah, for his partner. Yeah, and he was like, no, we're not. And it just stopped at that. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what have I done? So not only have you, like, discovered that she's being a shady bitch, but yeah. now anybody who listens to this podcast knows. Yeah. yeah. She's a shady and bitch. And now he knows. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you think there's a chance that it's like, you know, she, it's like a Tinder account. She had like ages ago that's just kind of still floating around. Or do you think it's like a relative? So yeah, it's because I've been on Tinder for a long time as well. Mm-hmm. And I have never seen her on there. It's not been very recent. It's, yeah. And I'm either sort of like, you know, either she's out here trying to like cheat and everything or like just one of those girls that are like, oh, I just want to make new friends. You don't make But, yeah, being on Tinder, you're normally there for, like, a hookup, one-night stand, whatever. Yeah, like, given that you've been on Tinder for a very long time, goes to show no one's settling down with you. Obviously. (laughs) I don't blame them at all. (laughs) I was kicked off Tinder many, many years ago, and, like, I tried the whole, like, you know, different phone numbers, different email address. I made different fucking Facebook accounts to leave just to try and get Tinder again, and that was when I realised that I was going to spend my life by myself, because I'm not even fucking Tinder. You know (laughs) it. But I feel like there's so many other, like, avenues for women to make friends that I don't yeah. think Tinder is, like, a yeah. justifiable answer. Yeah, like, I think it's Bumble. They have a yeah. section just for making friends. Yeah, they do. Because yeah. that's where I've gravitated towards it because I'm really tired and lonely. But, yeah, so um, Bumble has <laughs> a dating and a friend feature. Yeah. But, like, I also think, you know, in so many, like, local communities and stuff, like, there's so many, like, girls' advice groups. Yeah. Like, girl pages, local pages, and that sort of stuff. There's yeah. no... I, I don't feel like there is a reason for women to resort to Tinder. To make friends. To make friends. Especially if your partner doesn't know about it. Yeah, exactly. If you're... Yeah, like, that's the thing. It's like, do what you want, but if, like, you're hiding from your partner that you're trying to make friends... Yeah, it just seems a bit shady. Very shady. But, like, shady. the thing is, as well, they've been together since, like, me and him break up. Oh, so, like, back... So, like, it's been, like... Years. So it's like what seven years or something. It's yeah, six years. a while. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, hey, so your girlfriend's on Tinder. <laughs> Maybe it's been a very lonely six, seven years for her without friends. <laughs> Fuck, I'm an asshole. <laughs> My goodness. So yeah, I feel like we have the ability to fucking roast anybody. Yeah. We. <laughs> <laughs> So we're back from some little issues that we've just had, but in that little break, I pulled up a photo of Scotty Cam to show Zoe. And I do know who he is. The dumb bitch knew who Scotty Cam was his entire time. Yeah. But um, moving on from that, we want to bring to you um, a story. We were asked on our socials about what's a stupid story about us. And I think it's very hard for us to determine yeah. what's a stupid story, but we've got a fucking chaotic story. Oh, it's just... I still yeah. can't. No, it's one of those nights that I think we will, like, it doesn't matter how old we get, how much dementia we get, like, this story will forever haunt us. It's, like, ingrained <laughs> in my memory right now. It was one of those nights that was so chaotic and hectic and just fucked, but it was so fun. But it was, like, <laughs> it was really calm at the beginning. Like, everyone was just generally having a good time. Yeah, well, Yeah. <laughs> It's like one of those nights, you know, when you see, like, other people's lives just fall apart and it's amazing because you can just watch everyone else crash and burn and you sit there and you know that you can go home and you're fine after that. Yeah. That's the the situation I was in at least. For you anyway. (laughs) For you anyway. (laughs) So there was, like, a few months where Zoe and I and a few other friends, some other content creators, we would go camping. Yeah. Quite frequently. Like, every weekend. <laughs> every weekend. Any time anyone had a mental breakdown, it was like, all right, girls, pack the tent, we go in. Which was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was, yeah, a lot, a yeah. lot of camping. It was <laughs> like the smallest inconvenience as well that would happen to us. We'd be like, that's it, let's go. Yeah, but, like, it was so, like, we would just kind of roll on with our camping. Yeah. Like, so, say... Two of us would start out camping, and then on, like, day two, another person would rock up, but then someone else would go home, and it was just, like, almost like a hostel. Yeah. Like, we just had our tent set up, and people would come and go and stay. And anyway, there was this one weekend, and we're camping out at Ellen Borough yeah. Reserve, and we had our little tents, like, our situation just set up. It was fucking mint. 
And we've been there for a few days already. And we see cars pull up of people we know. Yeah. And they set up near us, and we find out it's someone's birthday. Yeah. You knew some of the people that were over there. Yeah, I knew a couple of them. I am sitting there like, I don't give a fuck who these people are, just don't bother me. Yeah, like, having I'm a like, little perimeter set up, yeah. like lights and everything. When we camp, like, we, we camp. Yeah. But, like, it's almost like we're living out there. Like, like pretty much, yeah. We set up camp as if we're never going home. We've got solar lights, a shower, like, everything. Anything you need at camping, we have it. But, um... Anyway, so people are going out camping to, like, have, like, a party. I feel like they're just trying to do, like, a very low-budget bush tour. Yeah. Like, it was sad. Yeah. And they're over there, like, pulling bongs, coughing their fucking lungs up. Like, oh, my goodness. If I heard one more person cough, like, I was ready to start swinging. Yeah. I had had enough. And anyway, at this time, when we went camping, we actually took a TV box out with us. That is how much we were prepared for anything. We were sitting there... With our camp chair, set up, like, the fucking set of, like, in grown-ups and all the fucking, the sexy daddies are sitting there watching the girls, like, change, like, the fucking whatever in the car. Like, that's beside the point. But we're sitting around and we're watching TV on a cardboard box. Yeah. <laughs> we had a TV remote, everything. We're just yeah. fucking, fucking around. And... That day was actually a really rough day for me. Yeah. I was doing, like, a pregnancy test. I had a cut of cruises. I was like, this shit's negative. I'm like doubting this. these cruises. Yeah. Like, that is the end of me. And um, so we're sitting there, and I did the pregnancy test. It was negative. I start drinking. And then all of a sudden, shit breaks loose at this poor budget-ass fucking bush door. Yeah. Do you know? Oh, God. <laughs> so, um... One of my really good mates were camping there, who is, like, my brother. I've known him for years since I think I was 16, 17. So, like, a fair few years. And his swag yeah. got moved. And the, what is it, the... Like, the kind of the, the tub, like, the yeah. flooring attached to his swag got ripped. That got ripped. And he started, like, getting angry and going off his head and everything. So I ran over trying to be, like, you know, the good big sister and, like, dude, you know, you need to calm down. Like, just come over with us, chill out. Like, I'll give you a cigarette. Yeah, I'll, you know, like, we'll feed you and everything. Don't stress. Just, like, leave that group for a little bit. And just chill out. And just, yeah, chill out. Yeah. But because of where our campfire was, like, the people that we were camping with actually saw who moved his flag and who ripped it. By that point, I was, I was already halfway through my carton. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was just loving the drama. And anyway, one of the people we were camping with pointed out there was a couple that moved the swag. Yeah. And for some reason, I approached this girl <laughs> with an empty cruiser bottle in my hand. I walk up to her, and, like, she's, like, talking, and, like, they're all, like, kind of, like, kerfuffling about, like, oh, yeah. I didn't do it, I didn't do it. I don't know who did it. Yeah, and I'm like, baby girl... I think you know who did, and I just had to drop this fucking bottle because I was about to just, oh, I was, I don't know why, I had nothing to do with this, (laughs) but because, like, he was your friend, it was his swag, I was just like, done, he's my brother by affiliation. And it was like, you know, you were also really emotional as well, so that would not have helped. Yeah, and then, like, we're standing there talking to this chick, and I'm just kind of like, I need to just get out of this situation. So I pop a squat, as you do, mid-conversation. Yeah, and like, people. or standing there, like, in a circle <laughs> just talking, and you just see, like, Daft just shrink down. I'm wearing shrunk and yes. <laughs> But, yeah, I'm just, like, sitting there with a torch on, too. So, like, everybody can see me kissing. Yeah. It's just, like, no shame. It's like, what do you guys want me to do? Yeah. And then, like, out of nowhere, did you leave before or after the fights? So I left right before the fights. Okay. So, Zoe and I have very different stories that came out of this situation. Um, so, do you want to, you tell yeah. your part, so it makes more So, sense. it was about, I want to say like 10, 11 o'clock maybe. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so it was, it was between 10 and 10.30, roughly around that time, at night time. And I had work the next day, so I was like, you know, I'll just, like, drive back. I got in this, like, heated argument with this guy beforehand, like, you know, through Snapchat. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, you know, like, fuck this. There's fights going on. I'm fighting with this guy. Like, I've got work in the morning. I need to watch my work clothes and shit. I'm going. So 
see it. Yeah. So I got in my car and I made it. I'm what, so half the way? I'm so sorry. No, you're like three quarters of the way Okay, home. so I made it three quarters of the way home. And I was just, you know, not, I don't even, like, I feel like I just zoned out. You, as, weren't, you weren't drinking at all? No, I was drinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I was drinking, I time. stopped yeah. a couple of hours, like, before I drove. Yeah. I drank water and everything, and then, yeah, so, like, on the drive home, I got, like, three quarters of the way there. I can't remember exactly what happened, so I'm just going to say, like, I zoned out because I cannot remember that bit at all. Mm-hmm. And, and then happened? I was turning a corner yeah. at, like, 100, 110, hit some loose gravel, and I just remember hearing the car go over the loose gravel and I freaked out. Yeah. And, like, my whole life, everyone's like, hey, try slamming brakes on loose gravel. But apparently I was just like, no, nah, fuck it, let's just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight, just like in yeah. those chances. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, like, freaked out, slammed my brakes on and then lost control. And I remember thinking at that time I was like, see if you can control it so I tried for like only two to three seconds and then it was almost like it was in slow motion that whole thing Mm -hmm. and then when I couldn't gain control of the car that I had for less than two months as well Mm -hmm. knew everything amazing I remember thinking you know if you can't gain control just let it go because it's going to end up like so much worse yeah so I sort of just like let go and I was just like fuck god take the wheel so basically you drove your car into a gully yeah moral of the story Zoe is in loose gravel and she drove her car into yeah. a fucking gully I went I think I smashed into like because I went back the next day it was like two three threes yeah I smashed into nearly ended up in like someone else's property yeah because it was a fence like literally two meters in front of me yeah as well and yeah completely rode off this car yeah and woke up, called my boss up, and I was like, hey, crash your car, I'm not coming in tomorrow, don't think I can make it in. Then I called you up, and I yeah. was like, oh, yeah, then I'm sitting just here, crash car. <laughs> I'm sitting at this fucking campsite, and in the time that you had gone crash your car, the guys, like, everyone at this fucking bush yeah. door, there's just, like, punching on, there's a boy, like, a guy punching his sister, someone swinging an axe around, <laughs> There was, everyone was just fucking violent. And it's like, it didn't, I don't even know where it came from. All yeah. I know is that I squat down to do a piss, I would stand back up, and there's just violence. Like, people had chainsaws out, oh. cutting down fucking poles and bong stuff. Bong got thrown at a car, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, a bong got thrown at a moving car, like, all sorts of shit. And so I'm sitting there trying to work that out, and I get the phone call from him saying, I've just crashed. And I'm like, I've had, like, 15 cruises. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Yeah. Obviously, I've got to get my car keys to come and get you. Yeah. And someone else had overheard that you had crashed. So yeah. another car of people that were kind of camping with us, they got into their car to drive out to come and get you yeah. as well. So I'm following them. I didn't even realise they were a part of like, yeah. us because I was not in a safe... I should not have yeah. been driving. No. But I grabbed your mate. He jumps in the car and one of our other friends. We come out to find you. We finally fucking get there. We're parking on the side of the road trying to get you out and we see the red and blue lights flashing. And I'm sitting there on the side of the road being like, just don't yeah. be suspicious. But it was literally like just as I crawled up onto the road as well. Yeah. They pulled over. Yeah. And it was sort of like you and me sort of just got like pushed to the back. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then, like, so the police were kind of like, they were called out because of all the fights. Like, some of the court, which makes yeah. so much more sense than... What the guys that we were with were just like, hey, look, we're like, we're just leaving that party, we're yeah. sort of shit, whatever. Police fucking, you know, they're just like, cool, they didn't notice there was a car down in the fucking gully, they drive off. We all go back to the campsite, and the next, like, well, no, we're sitting there around the fire, yeah. and our mates calling out to fucking chicks trying to fight them as well, and you and I are sitting around this fire going, like, fuck me. Yeah. We can't handle any more yeah. violence tonight. And then all I know is that I went to sleep and I woke up the next morning and you were grabbing my leg saying, hey, take me to hospital. (laughs) And so that's pretty much the stupid and chaotic story that we have. Yeah. You crashed your fucking car and everyone else was fighting and all I did was get really drunk and pee everywhere. Yeah. Pretty much. That's exactly what happened. Pretty fucking much. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? So just to top it off, I was fine. I wasn't actually injured. I don't think anyone cared at that point. 
I was done. I was, I was just, done. I just wanted to see. I was like, well, shit, like I've lost my water. <laughs> Mate, I drank into the hospital, drove 45 fucking minutes back to get you your fucking things, and then drove all the way back into the yeah. hospital to bring your fucking things yeah. to you. And in that time, I was like in and out, done, went to work because I was, you know. Yeah. Got no, a coffee. No. no. Got a coffee, just walked back up and met you there, and I was like, oh, I'm finished. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I feel like after that, Kaylee Square is probably a good place to wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for listening. Feel free to leave us five-star reviews. If you don't like our fucking storytelling, please let us know and we'll stick to talking about what we do know, which is everything sexual. Yes. So leave your review so we know what you guys do and don't want us to talk about. Yes. And as we have stated in every other episode so far, if we like your comment, we will send you nudes. Yes. Simple, easy. Done. You get a peekaroo. No, we'll no. We'll, no, we'll just send it to them. Fine. Okay, sweet. They're, they just can't be serious. Just, they're getting nudes. Done. Portuguese. Awesome. <laughs> so make sure you find us on our platforms. My Snapchat's Jackie KJXO. My Snapchat is Zoe.CrossingHand. And we will have all of our OnlyFans and our other details linked on the screen in the chat. Fucking yes. wherever you need to find it. So thank you, and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you.